pray that you have your hand upon us, God. Let your anointing be upon the, the Word and the preacher, God. Let your anointing be upon the singers, the musicians, Lord. And God, I pray that we receive the Word you have for us tonight, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we all give Him a shout of praise? Can you give Him a praise? Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. tonight uh, we're going to go to God in prayer and uh, we have several needs remember Micah, Jesse and Presley, the kids are home tonight, Micah's uh, running a temperature so we just decided to leave him home tonight With he actually has an ear infection we went to the doctor today and he's got an ear infection and uh, just pray for him and uh, we want to remember Candace Aiden, Haley uh, Cameron um, and if you have a family member, you have somebody on your mind that you want God to remember, you want us to pray for, if you will, just raise your hand. God knows every need. He knows every name. And not only that, He knows how to meet our needs, does He not? He, if The Bible says, if an if a earthly father knoweth how to give his son a good gift, how much more does God know how to give a good gift? So not only can he meet our needs, but he can give us good gifts. He knows how to meet our needs and give us good gifts. So let's just remember these names, and let's go to God in prayer and ask him to have his hand upon them. Lord, we thank you for this night that you've given us, God. I pray that you have your hand upon every name that was mentioned, Lord. Every hand representing a name, God, I pray that you touch that need, God. You know every need here tonight, God. By your blood, by your stripes, we are healed, God. You have overcome all sin. You have overcome all things, God. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for the work you've done, Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. And it's so good to have everyone here tonight. And I asked a, a couple of ladies to testify. And, and I just, you can just stand at your seat. But Sister Linda has a testimony. I want you to give your testimony, Sister Linda. Let's give God a good hand. I know they are happy. I know Aniston's happy too. I know she is. So ready for some normalcy, just a little bit more, I'm sure. And also, Sister Carolyn, you had a testimony I wanted you to share. I am so thankful for God and I'm so thankful for what he's doing for Shane. And uh, we had known all the time that the, they had been having Bible studies in the jail and when I didn't know, uh, Tommy knew it, but I didn't know it till this week that Shane is the one that's starting them. And I am so thankful for it. I'm so thankful that now that he, all he wants to talk about is God. And, but there's a, an atheist in there with him, and uh, we uh, carried his Bible down there to him. And uh, Shane's been carrying his Bible around, going to the Bible studies and stuff. And the atheist told him, says, uh, you ought to take that Bible that you're carrying and use it for toilet paper. But uh, God is in it. I don't know what Shane told him, but see, uh, the devil gets stirred up when God is moving. Amen. And I'm so thankful that he's working through Shane, and I'm so thankful for what he's doing for him. Because he just talks like, like a different person now. He's not the same person that he was, and I'm so thankful for it. God is doing a great work in Shane's life, and so thankful for that. So thankful for these two testimonies and God being able to work. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Um, Sister uh, Hutto wanted me to announce that if you haven't been told, tomorrow night you can pick up your donuts here at the church at 8.30. That's kind of late, but you can pick them up if you want them tomorrow night here at 8.30. Or you can wait until Friday morning. They're going to be here about 9 o'clock in the morning. Friday morning, you can pick your donuts up. If you've ordered any donuts, you can pick your donuts up then. Also, we have our monthly newsletter out in the foyer. Uh, we just got those fresh off the printers today. So we are on time this month. And uh, Jesse got that ready yesterday and sent it off to uh, Lexington Progress. And they printed them off for us. So get... Get your uh, newsletter out there in the front in the foyer. That way you know what's going on in the month of June. Don't forget Change for Life. Bring your bottles back full of change. And we need them by Father's Day. And let's just give Sister Kathy a good hand for getting that together. So that's going for a great cause, Change for Life. Um, so let's get those back by Father's Day. If the ushers will come, we'll go ahead and take up our tithe and offering. And I'll say, I'd also like to say it's good to have my Uncle Billy, Aunt Selena, Lindsay, and Connor back. Good, good to have them back. Good to have Connor back on the drums. Yes, Brother Glenn, Sister, Sister Judy. Yes, it's good to have y'all back too. They went on a trip, so it's good to have everybody back. Let's stand and go to God in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to, to give. God, I pray that you have your hand upon those that have to give and those that do not. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord's been good. The Lord's been good. He's really been good. Good. The Lord's been good. 
the children can be dismissed. He's really been good to me. Just can't let him down. Can't let him down. Hallelujah. Can't let him down. He's really been good to me. Let's sing this again. Why don't we move around and shake hands with a few people? Could you do that? Greet our visitors. It's really been good to me. I just can't let him down. I can't let him down. I can't let him down. I can't let him down. It's really been good to me. Lord a hand clap of praise because he's worthy. Amen. If you'd like to stand just for a moment, we're going to read scripture. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11. And we're going to go back to what we talked about the other Wednesday night. Still small voice. We're going to cover just a few of the things we covered, but we're going to go to new material and won't be very long, but we're going to talk about the still small voice. So good to have Everyone here, Lindsay's got a friend here tonight. We're so glad you're here. Let's give our visitor a good hand. Amen. And everybody else, I know you got your Bible in your hands. That's what I normally do, ask you to clap your hands when you get your Bible in your hands. But we're so glad to have everyone here tonight in the house of the Lord. And it feels good being here. There's just something special about Wednesday night Bible study. And the prayer room was wonderful, Sister Judy. I felt the Lord and had a real good crowd back there praying. On a Wednesday night, I think that's wonderful. Amen. <clears throat> have several of you back from uh, out of town. We're glad you're back, and we missed you, and we just welcome you to the house of the Lord. First Kings 19 and 11, and he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. It wasn't in the wind, it wasn't in the earthquake, it wasn't in the fire, but it was this still, small voice. And it was so when... Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the inner end of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What dost thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I 
even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, uh, the son of Nimsha, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel, Mehoha, I didn't speak in tongues again, <laughs> shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room, and it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Ahazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So let's talk about this still, small voice tonight. Lord, I pray you would bless your word to our hearts. Give us good, good ground tonight. The word is the incorruptible seed. I pray that it would find a lodging and it would bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Are y'all with me tonight? <clears throat> okay, you can be seated. The still small voice. Now I know we've covered this, so I'm just going to touch on a little bit. Someone said sometimes the Lord calms the storm and sometimes he lets the storm rage and he calms his child. Okay? There is a great deal of truth to that. Very often what we really need is to be quiet before the Lord so that we can hear him speak the words that will calm our fears. Let me just say this right here. God has ordained preaching. God has ordained teaching. And uh, uh, it pleased God, the Bible said, through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. So God will speak no clearer to you than when he speaks over the pulpit. Are y'all with me? If anybody's on Facebook or texting, I don't want you to do that in church, okay? Did y'all see that picture one time? Someone took a picture down from the balcony and had a whole row of kids, and they all were on their iPads. If you're on your iPad, I got my iPad, and I have my phone, but I, I use the scripture. I'm not on Facebook. So, uh... If, if your neighbor, if you're sitting by someone that's using Facebook or text and during church, you punch them. I give you the liberty and say, you shouldn't do that in church. Amen. Would you do that for me? If you, if you think that's good preaching, would you just clap your hands? I'm already preaching. You know why I said that? Because I said that it's because God speaks no clearer than when he speaks over the pulpit. And you walk in here with a lackadaisical attitude and you're on Facebook or you're texting somebody, uh, uh, that's, that's displeasing to the Lord. And we live in an irreverent generation. And, and I tell you, when I was brought up, you behaved in church. And this church does behave, and I thank God for it. Uh, and when kids was not, were not quiet, they were taken out. Okay? Because there's people around that would like to enjoy the service. Amen? So we want to. We want the house. We want everything to be done decently and in order. And we want to respect the word of God. And so God, it doesn't matter who ministers behind this pulpit. The word of God and the minister is to be respected by giving Him your attention and a few amens every now and then, and a few praise the Lord's, amen, and some uh, backslidden Pentecostal nods. A lot of times when people, can I just, I'm just going to shoot you with a shotgun tonight, okay? So get ready. A lot of times when people, when people get quiet in church, they're backslid. Hello? You know why some people can't pray out loud? Because they're backslid. That's true in a lot of cases. Man, when the Holy Ghost gets on you, now I know sometimes you're sick, etc. cetera, but, but I'm telling you, when you get the feeling, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you want to pray out loud, and you want to praise out loud, and you want to worship out loud. You want to have loud church. But if you're lukewarm and cold and backslid, you just want to hide somewhere in the corner. And glad church is over. Amen. But I'm glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said church is about to start. Not when it's about over. Backslid folk are glad when church is over. People that's on fire are glad when church starts. I'm already going, y'all. 
Amen. I'm teaching a lot better than some folks, you know, respond. <laughs> Jamar, I'm trying to help somebody tonight. If I judged how I do, by the way, some of you get with me, I would go, I, my self-esteem would be in the basement. Come on, y'all. I'm going to teach and preach whether you get with me or not. Amen. That's what you got to have as a preacher. Because you're living in a day and time when people just don't get with the word like they used to. I don't know why I'm on this. People go to the rock concerts and they're into it, y'all. They don't look for the back seat in rock concerts. They're down. They want. As a matter of fact, I saw on Facebook the other day somebody that almost every one of us know, Brother Larry, camped out for no telling how long just to be able to get standing on the rail so they could look at their rock idol. Camped outside on the cold sidewalk or hot sidewalk. It was outside anyway. In a tent, I guess. I don't know if they had a tent. Maybe they had a sleeping bag. So they can get up front. I tell you, that ought to be something, a desire within our heart to want to get close to the things of God. The world wants to get close to the things of the world. Why don't we want to get close to the things of God? Come on. We're living in the end time. It's time that the church ought to be the church. We ought to have some fire. We ought to have some anointing. You believe that? Churches want people to come in here and get saved and get baptized when they're about half backslid. Listen, we're not going to get anybody saved until we get on fire for Jesus. Okay. That was free, y'all. I'm still talking about the still small voice. <laughs> but I may take some detours. I may take some detours. Praise God. Amen. You know, I was at a church, I was at a service the other day, and I was sitting where I could, you can, I could see the pulpit and I could see other people, and someone was ministering, and all during their, their ministry, all during their teaching, preaching, there was folk over there just yakety yak, all during it, talk, talk, back and forth, back and forth. And I thought, that's, that's, that is not right. Now, I know sometimes you may have to say something to your neighbor. I know that, you know. But generally, you're focused in on what the Word is wanting to say. Because, see, God wants to speak to us over the pulpit. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. If you, if you just thank the house of God and, and what's happening here, listen, somebody say, I want to hear from God. I want to hear from God. Well, you need to get a pastor and listen to what he's saying. Because you'll hear the voice of God in His voice. And let me tell you, do you know who's going to give an account for you in eternity? You know who's going to give an account? Ever? Your pastor. Did you know that? Amen. God's going to ask you, pastor, how was he? How was she? Did they line up? Did they obey your, your ministry? And you better make sure when you stand before God and you can't say you obeyed your pastor, you could be in trouble. <laughs> I said you could be in trouble. I want to make sure that I say yes to the man of God, yes to the pastor. Because when he stands before God and you stand before God, he's going to give an answer for your soul. And I hope he can say they were good saints. They were good saints. They were great saints. And great saints, they hear. They hear the voice of God. They hear the voice of God. Psalm 46 and 10 <clears throat> It says, be still and know that I am God. <clears throat> be still. Be quiet. Shut everything down. We have so much racket in our world. So many devices. Our devices have become our vices. Facebook. Twitter. Texting. Cell phones. YouTube, videos, sports, movies. Uh, none of this is wrong. I'm just saying sometimes God can't even get a word in. God can't even get a word in. So you got to be still. Shut it down. And know, God said, that I am God and I will be exalted among the heathen and I will, I will be exalted in the earth. See, before you can really see Him exalted you got to be still and let him show you 
He's God. He's God. And see, you can't re- we can't really worship God like we're supposed to without a revelation of His greatness. He is great and He's greatly to be praised. Before you can praise Him, you've got to realize, Woo! He's great! That's why when I start out my prayer life, a lot of times in my prayer, I, there's one scripture I love so much. It's mentioned twice in the Bible. The heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain him. And you, you know how, I mean, the, the scientists tell you how huge the, 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 the universe is. Galaxies and billions and billions of galaxies. And God fills all space. And he said in his word, the heavens declare the glory of God. And before we can really worship him like we should, we've got to get a revelation of how great he is. And we still can't find out. The Bible says that his ways are past finding out. After we have been in heaven a million years, and we won't be having years over there, but after we've been in there, uh, heaven for millions and millions of years, we still won't know how great our God. We would be in heaven eter- in eternity for eternity and still not know how great God is. And it's hard for us to praise Him. We have to have cheerleaders and we ought to be when somebody just gives us just one little opportunity to magnify God. We ought to be magnifying our great God. If you want to feel him, I've learned if you want to feel God, you got to be a praiser. If you want to feel God, you got to be a worshiper. If you want to get strength for the journey, you got to lift up the name of Jesus. Let's just do that right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's great. He's great. So sometimes you got to just get away from that. Uh, I read, I read, I'm not going to read Exodus 14. They got my notes up there. But uh, many times we need to be still and see God work. All right, great scripture here. We're fixing to show you a video, about a two or three minute video. And it's about. In John 10, y'all go ahead and be getting a video ready. John 10 and 27, and, and you can drop the lights here in a second too. It's Brother Nick's up there. John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. Did you, I want you to get that. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Did you know sheep, they'll, they'll know, they know their shepherd's voice? They ain't going to follow anybody else. And I just want to know, if you're a sheep, if you're his sheep, you should know his voice. And he should be speaking to you. And he's going to direct your life. He's going to, and when you look back after making decisions, after seeking and hearing God's voice, you're going to look back and say, yes, I heard from God. I heard from God right there. He directed my life right there. There was a fork in the road. I could have went either way. But I heard God's voice. And God showed me which way to go. Oh my goodness, where would I be if I hadn't heard his voice? Watch this right here. I think this is pretty good. Go ahead, Brother Doug.
good, Brother Doug. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Isn't that great? Let's clap our hands unto the Lord. If he's your shepherd, <clears throat> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're going to hear, we're going to hear the voice of the shepherd. And I thank God for it. Okay, have you remember times that you heard the voice of the shepherd saying this or saying that? And you listen to the voice of the shepherd. And listen, don't be one of those that say, I don't want to hear the shepherd's voice because if you're that one, you're going to wind up in trouble. There's going to be a wolf. There's going to be a lion out there. And the voice of your shepherd is saying, here, here sheep, here sheep. There's other videos that, here sheep. And if you're not listening to the shepherd and you don't come and you go a different way, you're going to go into tragedy. It's very important that God's sheep hear his voice. The only hope for us is that we get a word from God. This is what this world needs. It needs a word from God. And Elijah, Elijah, Elijah needed a word from God. We're going to talk about that great prophet, Elijah. Okay, he was running from Jezebel, right, at this time. And, and, and so he, he ran and, and he got under a, I'll get into it here in just a little bit. A little, what kind of tree? Somebody help me. Yeah, juniper tree. And he was needing to hear the voice of the Lord. I'm going to get into that here in just a little bit. But Elijah wasn't impressed, or it, the, the, the wind, the earthquake, the fire, uh, none, of that, in, none of that did anything for Elijah. But when he heard that still, small voice, he wrapped his head in his mantle. It stirred him up when he heard what we need, what you need, what we all must have in our life. We must have a word from God. There is the... There is the rhema, that daily bread that we hear, a voice from the Lord. And he gives us direction for our life. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you want to go shipwrecked in your walk with God, don't get a word from God. Don't hear anything from God. Listen, he said, my sheep hear my voice. Now, word of God is speaking. Brother Corey sings that song, word of God speak. Isn't that a beautiful song? Word of God speak. This is what we need. This is what you need. You need to hear the word of God speak into your spirit, into your life. Word of God is speaking. But the question is, are we hearing? Are we hearing? God said, come on. Or are we hearing? Listen to Amos. Amos 8 and 11. Watch this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God. That I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. It's not of speaking the word, not of reading the word, not of teaching or preaching the word, but of hearing. But of hearing. I've heard some of you even say, I come to church and I don't know what's going on and I don't even know what the preacher's preaching half the time and I'm just ready. I'm telling you, you need to ask God to baptize your ears with hearing because the Word of God is being taught and the Word of God is being preached. But are you hearing? Are you hearing? And it's not for the preacher's benefit, more or less. I mean, he is being helped when he ministers, but it's for the saints. It's for the congregation. Listen, and he said there's going to come, there's going to come a day, there's going to come a time when there's going to be a famine of hearing the word of God. I'm just not hearing. I, I want to hear what God's got to say. We need so much to hear the words of the Lord. That's the voice that will calm all of our fears. That's the voice. Revelations 3 and 6, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, what are you saying to the churches? What are you saying, God? What are you saying? What, what do you want me to hear, Lord? And, and let me tell you something. I'll tell you this right here. Um, let me say this right here. I want to get it out right. Um, you know, strong impressions. The Lord will speak to you. And I don't think we need to go around and say, the Lord said this. Some, some people will take offense to that. And I try to, you know, you know we don't want to come across like, like, oh, I'm, you know, X, Y, Z. I think we all should have a, 
a spirit of humility. God can speak to anybody. If he can speak through a donkey, he can speak to anybody. Okay? But I remember, you know, we, prayer is about a talking. Prayer is about communication. Prayer is not just about you talking. Prayer is about God talking. And one time I had this, I got such in a rut in my calisthenics and my prayer. I went through a particular motion, you know. And <clears throat> I wanted to pray and, and go through this and do A, B, C, X, Y, Z in, in my prayer. You know what the Lord, he spoke to me one time. He said, uh, let me lead in prayer. Let me lead in prayer. You know, there's a, you know, people that dance. I just dance in the spirit, but people that dance. Normally, I think somebody leads, right? Don't somebody lead in dancing? Am I right? Yep. I don't know. I, I think that's right. But see, in prayer, God wants to lead this conversation. Have you ever talked to somebody you can't get a word in edgewise? You just sit there and... Yeah, huh? No, really? Oh my, my good Lord, how mercy! You know, y'all to be a good conversationist. Y'all let somebody say something sometime. Let somebody else say something. Brother Frank Maynard, he said one time he went to Vietnam and they got on some kind of drug and they drank it and and man, all you want to do is talk. And they wanted, they couldn't stop and they put a clock on the table and said, okay, you got ten minutes to talk and when it's over, it's my time to talk. And they set the clock on the table, and that guy talked for 10 minutes, and they said, it's my time now, and then I, I'm going to talk now. Well, that's the way some folk are with God, you know. I'm going to talk, God. I ain't got nothing to hear. Let's just let me tell you everything God, God said. I'd like to say something. See, some folks treat God the way, you know, some folks treat you when they talk to you. You ought to be a good conversationalist with people. You shouldn't try to dominate, you know, well, I caught, I caught two fish the other day, and and everything. So, oh, I caught four fish the other day. You know, well, I, I, I hit a 400-foot home run. Well, I hit a 500-foot home run. I mean, it don't matter what you do. They're going to do more, right? Let's don't be that person. Let's listen. Let's let somebody else talk for a while. And I'm talking, I'm preaching to myself now. Hallelujah. Because I do like to talk. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. But, see, why won't you let God talk for a while? Why you got to talk all the time? Why don't you let God lead in prayer? God don't ever talk to me. No wonder you won't shut your mouth up. <laughs> Dr. Jeffress said, after your prayer time, be still and listen. Just be quiet. Say, okay, God. Okay. Why do you want to talk to me? He said he may not say nothing to you this day, the next day, the next day, the next day. But one day he's going to drop something in your spirit. And you're going to know that it's God. Let me tell you something. If God ever tells you something, it's going to come to pass. But if you go around telling people that God said X, Y, Z, and you just thought God said X, Y, Z, and you go around telling everybody that God said it, and it don't come to pass, you know how much credibility you're going to have? Zero. So if you ever say God said, you better make sure you know God said. Amen. Come on. But see, when you get used to hearing God's voice, you know it's God. Right. How many knows what I'm talking about? Amen. You know it's God. So God wants to speak to us. God wants to talk to us. Listen to this right here. James, I'm going to read you some things here. James Hamilton writes, Before refrigerators, refrigerators and people used ice boxes to preserve their food. Anybody remember ice boxes? Brother Roach, Sister Pat, my dad, Sister Shirley, anybody else? Brother Ice Box, no refrigerator. Sister Shirley Herndon, or Sister Martha, praise God. <coughs> there you are, Sister Shirley. All right, <clears throat> they had ice boxes, so y'all know what I'm talking about. Yo, young people, you know what an ice box is? It's, they, put, they put ice in this box and they, they chill their food. They, kept, they didn't have a refrigerator. Can y'all believe that, young people? No refrigerator. My, my mom said they used to keep stuff cool in a spring. I mean, you got to walk a 200 yards up the woods to go get a glass of milk. Amen. Cow milk. <laughs> hey, go to the spring and get me a glass of milk. <laughs> I mean, that's, aren't we blessed? Amen. Okay, so icebox. So before refrigerators, people used... Ice 
houses and boxes, ice houses, to preserve their food. Ice houses had thick walls, no windows, and a tightly fitted door. In winter, when, when uh, streams and lakes were frozen, large blocks of ice were cut and hauled to the ice houses and covered with sawdust. Often the ice would last well into the summer. One man lost a valuable watch while working in an ice house. He searched diligently for it, carefully raking through the sawdust, but didn't find it. His fellow workers also looked, but their efforts, too, proved futile. A small boy who heard about the fruitless search slipped into the ice house during the noon hour and soon emerged with the watch. Anybody know how he found it? Anybody want to guess? Huh? Yeah, yeah, you're on something. What now? Yes, and he listened, and you know what he heard? Tick, 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 and he found it. That's the way the voice of God is sometimes. You've got to get quiet. All the other voices, the voice of the world, the voice of your peers, the voice of the enemy is shouting at you, but you've got to close. That's why I said enter into your closet and listen, and God will speak. You will hear that still small voice. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Let's clap our hands for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Often the question is not whether God is speaking, but whether we are being still enough and quiet enough to hear the voice of God. That still small voice. At various times in our lives, we will, be, we will face perplexing situations and fear, provoking circumstances, but we must remember that the Lord is not far from us. And He will never fail to guide us. Never fail to guide us. God will speak to us if we will get alone with Him and tune the rest of the world and its voices out. Sometimes standing for God makes us feel like we are standing alone, right? Just like Elijah. And I'm not going to read this for time's sake, but in 1 Kings 19, 1 through 4, Elijah felt like he was all alone. So he took refuge under the the scant shade, they called it a juniper tree, but they also called it a broom tree. Elijah prayed for what? I want to die. The prophet was discouraged. He, the mighty prophet, had stood for God as boldly as any of those who had gone before him. Yet there he was alone and seemingly deserted in this Desert wasteland, the very symbol of a wasted life, yet God would tenderly nourish and lead his prophet to a place where he could get some much needed instruction. He fed him, and then he was going to speak to him. He told him where to go. He told him to go to a, a mountain. So what does Elijah so desperately need? He needs to hear God's voice. What does this world need so much? We need to hear a voice of God, the voice of God. Ann Landers. How many remembers Ann Landers? Would you raise your hand real high? <coughs> Young people. Y'all don't remember Ann Landers. <clears throat> Kyra, you don't remember Ann Landers, okay? Ann Landers used to write a column, right? How many's ever read Ann Landers? She wrote a column in newspapers, and she would give advice. Ann Landers would give advice. So Ann Landers had this to say about the letters that she received over the years. She said... And they published those letters that she had, and she'd put them in the paper. The people would ask her advice, and then she would write the advice, and it would be in the paper. Ann Landers. So Ann Landers had this to say about the letters that she received over the years, and she said, I've learned plenty, including most meaningfully, what Leo Rosen had in mind when he said, each of us is a little lonely deep inside and cries to be understood come on it makes me feel good i'm battling a cold but in jesus name we got victory hallelujah thank you brother billy she said ann lander said each of us is a little lonely deep inside and we cry to be understood did you know that's one of the main longings of every one of us we just want somebody to understand did you know that 
That's why we need to listen. And sometimes we don't need to give. They don't want the answer. You know, they're telling you what the problem is. Well, I can fix that. Break up with it. Break up with her. <laughs> Quit that job. <laughs> you know what I mean. We're, you know, they're halfway through telling you what they're going through, and you're ready to give them the solution. Eureka! I got the answer. They don't want the answer. You know what they want? I just want somebody to understand me. And so in order for you to be able to understand them, you got to listen to them. And somebody said, you listen with your eyes, not your ears. I'm talking to my wife. She ain't paying no attention to me. She's not here, so I can talk about her. She's listening, though. And I say, Karen, you listen with your eyes, not your ears. You look at me. Hang on every word. Give me a man and wow and golly. People like to be listened to. They really do. They like to be understood. They have a longing to be understood. And this is what Ann Lander says. that they, She realized that people just cries out. They cry out to be understood. She said, I have learned how it is with stumbling, tortured people in this world who have nobody to talk to. The fact, the column that she wrote has been a success, underscores, for me, at least, the central tragedy of our society, the disconnectedness, the insecurity, the fear that bedevils, cripples, and paralyzes so many of us. I have learned that financial success, academic achievement, and social or political status open no doors to peace of mind or inner security. We are all wanderers like sheep on this planet were wonders. And this is where the shepherd comes in. Let me add, we're all sheep looking for the shepherd. We're all sheep looking, listening for that still, small voice that will speak into our life and speak meaning and hope to us. Because when his voice speaks, fear evaporates y'all I'm telling you I've been I've been through many a struggle since I've lived for God and I found out <clears throat> when he speaks fear goes I just heard from God I just heard from the Lord that's what we need to hear we need to hear the Lord life can make us feel that our actions make no difference you know in our life what would nothing matters and this is what Elijah said, and I'm hurrying here. He said, take my life, you know, it's useless. Uh, just kill me, God. But Elijah, he didn't even die. <clears throat> he didn't even die. <clears throat> he was caught up into heaven. And he was praying to die. In his book, Second Thoughts, More Crime Rights, he said, fairy tales are wonderful because they always have the prince and the princess living happily ever after. Of course, life isn't a fairy tale, and in the real world, the prince may run off with someone, and the princess may walk out on the family to find herself, and the royal offspring may do drugs, and, and a downsizing at the plant may leave the entire family on the brink of bankruptcy, once we accept the fact that bad things do happen to good people, then we can get on with the business of living life to its fullest, giving, loving, creating, sharing, building, walking through every door of opportunity offered by this fragile, unpredictable, exciting experience called life. Now that's great advice, but still difficult when we feel that we are scraping bottom. But in Jesus Christ, there is more than good advice. There is hope and help, and there is the power of God for our situation. When we feel that nothing we do matters, we must listen. Listen for the voice of God and rely on His power. We must listen. God takes over when our strength is gone. And I thank God that God speaks 
to his people. And we find Elijah. Elijah went into a cave. And when the Lord came to him, he asked him, What are you doing here, Elijah? It wasn't long after he arrived at the cave on the mount that he heard the voice of God. His sister Carrie comes back. He heard the voice of God. But instead of giving him instruction or sympathy, the Lord asked him a question that must have seemed almost ridiculous to Elijah. The Lord asked, What are you doing here, Elijah? I can almost sense his attitude. In case you've missed something, Lord, I'm running for my life. Jezeb, Jezebel's after me. Have you ever heard of Jezebel? I've had it with rejection and fear of your people also, God. But when God asked you a question, but Dr. Jeffers, and Dr. Jeffers used to say this, when God asked you a question, what? He already knows the answer. That's like a lawyer. When they ask you a question, they know the answer. So you better be telling the truth, right? So God knows before he asks. What are you doing here, Elijah? He just wanted Elijah to examine himself. Examine himself. I believe God wants to speak to us. Sometimes, you know, Pentecostal people, you know, we go through our we, we go through our thing, prayer, you know, oh God. And that's good. I mean, sometimes God just God can just speak to you. One time the Lord impressed upon me. He said, You're sure making it hard for me to speak to you. Because if we would just open ourselves up. The Lord wants to speak to us. A man by the name of Max Dupree <coughs> related the following story. He said, Esther, my wife, and I have a granddaughter named Zoe, the Greek word for life. She was born prematurely and weighed one pound, seven ounces, so small that my wedding ring could slide up her arm to her shoulder. The doctor who first examined her told us that she had a 5 to 10% chance of living three days. When Esther and I scrubbed up for our first visit, we saw her in the intensive care unit, need on intensive care unit. She had two IVs in her navel, one in her foot, a monitor on each side of her chest, and a respirator, respirator tube and a feeding tube in her mouth to complicate matters. Her biological father had jumped ship the month before she was born. Realizing this, a wise and caring nurse named Ruth gave me my instructions. For the next several months, at least, you're the surrogate father. I want you to come to the hospital every day to visit her. And when you come, I want you to rub her body and her legs and her arms with the tip of your finger. While you're caressing her, you should tell her over and over how much you love her because she has to be able to connect your voice with your touch voice with your touch God knew that we also needed both his voice his word and his touch so he gave us not only his word but he gave us his spirit God's voice and God's touch says to us today I love you and God wants to direct our lives God knows his voice will comfort and challenge and guide and reassure and, and direct us and help us find our way we need a word from the Lord we need to hear God's voice and then we need to obey God's voice. Would you stand all over the building? That still, small voice. Would you just close your eyes all over the building? And would you just be, let's just be still just for a moment. And just listen for the Spirit. Listen for that still, small voice. And He wants to speak to us. He wants us to hear like sheep when the shepherd speaks. The sheep, like that video I showed you those sheep that's my father that's my shepherd that's my dad everything's going to be alright I hear the voice of my shepherd listen we're living in the end time this is a wicked mean world you better be hearing God's voice in your life I know God speaks over the pulpit but you need to hear him for yourself when you cry out and you listen for the voice of your shepherd 
the voice of your shepherd. What's he saying to you? Brother Benson said one time, somebody said, Preacher, have you heard any late news from God? I want to ask you, have you heard any late word from your father? What's your father saying? What's your father been talking to you about? What's God spoke to you lately? How about coming down around the altar tonight, everybody? And let's just open our hearts to the Lord. Let's hear that still, small voice. Could you do that? shepherd lay hands on each other take someone by the hand lay a hand on someone's shoulder let's pray one for another let's pray that we'll hear the voice of our shepherd Jesus. yes we want to hear your voice in this dark hour yes, God. we want to hear your voice God Don't forget Sunday morning. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Shake hands and be friendly.